Krishna didn't want to be bound. The normal, who wants to be bound? This material existence is called Bhava Bandha. Bound up in material existence. No one likes to be tied up. You see the cows, they also they want to be they don't like to be tied up. They prefer to be not tied up. Hmm? Sorry? Can you hear? And I, I have to speak directly into the mic, is it? Okay. And no one likes to be tied up, and Krishna didn't like to be tied up either. Krishna is never tied up. He's always free. Others may be tied up, but Krishna is not under the law. We are tied up in material life, bhava-bandha, maya-bandha. But Krishna, he's always free. He's not under the control of anyone. So especially young children, that's a common kind of punishment for them. You may close them in a room for some time. Or here the punishment was to tie him up. What to do? He was so naughty. Such a bad boy that Mother Yasoda, for only for Krishna's sake, she is boiling the milk, looking after the household. But in the meantime, Krishna is causing chaos in the home. So what to do? For his own sake, better tie him up. That so that he doesn't ruin everything in the household, which is only meant for his pleasure. So he doesn't harm himself and also to punish him. So for all these reasons, Mother Yashoda wanted to tie up Krishna. Not that she disliked him, but to teach him. She wanted to tie him up. But Krishna, like any other child, didn't like to be tied up. He protested. Other children may protest by crying. Krishna simply protested by exhibiting his mystic potency by which he was not tied up. Mother Yashoda was surprised. She brought all the other women in the house to bring all the rope, help to tie up Krishna, but somehow or other it didn't work. So Mother Yashoda, it wasn't new for her. She was finding out regularly that this child He's not like an ordinary child. He does extraordinary things. Just like this Putana witch was there. Krishna killed. Trinavata Asura, whirlwind demon. Shakata Asura, the cat demon. So Krishna already showed in various ways that he's an unusual child. So Mother Yashoda may not have been so much surprised. But anyway, she was determined to tie Krishna up. The, the child may start to rebel against the mother, but the mother wants to show, I'm in charge here. This uh, Yashoda's other names, Vajeshwari, Vrindavaneshwari. You say Radhe Vrindavaneshwari. But Mother Yashoda is also known as Vrindavaneshwari, Vajeshwari because Nanda Maharaj is the king of Vrindavan and she is the queen. So just like it's commonly said, Raja Rajeshwari. Have you heard that? Raja Rajeshwari. Means there's a Raja, he's the king. But who is the controller of the king? Is the queen. Rajeshwari. So, Yashoda Devi, known as Prajeshwari. She's the queen of Vrindavan. So, she's used to everyone following what she says in her household and throughout the whole of Raja. And especially, the mother expects her child to follow what she says, but Krishna, naughty naughty means he does all the things you don't want him to do or don't expect him to do. So she was determined to tie up Krishna for his own good. We should learn who to follow. Children have to be trained, not allowed to run wild. They have to be trained up as a good boy. 
otherwise in future you see if someone is badly behaved they will condemn his parents and how you brought up just like it very great insult in hindi or bengali if you call some someone you are the son of a pig is a very great insult to please <coughs> that you are father and mother is pig and you are also a pig because a pig is uncultured so if someone is acting very badly or you want to insult someone very badly that's the worst in insult in bengali is to call someone son of a pig if you ever want to learn how to insult people in bengali i don't recommend it it's not a good idea so the parents uh, they want to see how the children are coming out and that will reflect the children's behavior will reflect on the upbringing of the parents usually if we see someone is very nicely behaved we think that we expect someone from very cultured good family if someone comes from what is called a good family we expect them to be well behaved and if someone is uh, very rough in their behavior we think uh, low class very low class not very nicely brought up So Mother Yashoda wanted to punish Krishna, and she was determined. Krishna was determined. I will not be tied up. He was showing his mystic potency. But Mother Yashoda, she was determined. I will tie him up. But she brought all the ropes, and she couldn't do it. Running in the house, looking, where's the rope? Maybe there's some more ropes here. Look behind this almira. In that, go in that. Go down. Fine. Bring all the ropes. Come on. Bring them tight. Tie up Krishna. Cannot do it. So she was overworked, sweating, her flowers falling down, flowers from her hair, and perturbed. She was upset. But why this? I can't tie up this boy. She was upset that she was being defied by Krishna. So. Krishna finally gave her the mercy of allowing her to tie him up. This was his mercy on Mother Yashoda. What mercy? This the next three verses give uh, our next. Three. Actually, the uh, this is the end of this section of the Bila that Krishna is. Very naughty. Mother Yashoda tries to bind him up, cannot bind him up, and actually she binds him up. So the rest of the chapter is Shukdev Goswami speaking in glorification of Mother Yashoda. He mostly Shukdev Goswami when he's describing these leelas, he's just telling the story, and later on the commentators they give the the different philosophical points but here shukadev goswami in the middle of describing this pastime in great wonder he describes what mercy mother yashoda has received this uh, actually these several verses the very famous verses in the bhagavata that Shukdev Goswami describes one very secret quality of the Supreme Lord, His mercy. Now that's not secret. Everyone knows God should be merciful. Generally, people say, "God, oh God, have mercy on me." In the Catholic, Roman Catholic tradition, there's a famous prayer, "Kyrie eleison." I think it's in Greek. It means God have God have mercy on me. In Russia, there's that famous that uh, I don't know how to say. It. There's one famous book of one man who just used to wander all over Russia and saying the some Jesus prayer. Is it Jesus have mercy on me? Something like this. There's one book. It's written. No one knows even who wrote it. Some diary he kept. 
But his whole, he just went from place to place. And wherever he went, all he did was read the Bible and say, Jesus have mercy on me. That's all. So everyone knows God is merciful. But generally people think God's mercy means, well, I'll cure my backache, or I'll get more money, or my children will become rich. But what is the extent of the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Only very intimate devotees can understand how merciful he is. So these last few verses of this chapter, Shukadev Goswami in his astonishment, in his ecstasy, is describing the mercy that Krishna gave to Mother Yashoda. He describes that Krishna is the controller of the whole universe. Even great demigods like Brahma, Shiva, Indra, they're completely controlled by Krishna. We have no independence. But Krishna shows Brahma wanted to show himself better than Krishna. Krishna didn't allow. Brahma wanted to steal the cowherd boys and the cows. All right, you steal, but I still have them with me. And Brahma had to offer prayers. Indra wanted to show himself better than Krishna. Krishna didn't allow. You're not better than me. I'm better than you. You want to attack Vrindavan with rain? You can't defeat me. I'll hold over the hill. Lord Shiva even fought with Krishna. Later we see, on behalf of Bana Asura, Lord Shiva fought with Krishna. Krishna defeated him. So the great demigods, they are the order carriers of Krishna. Even the sun and the, the sun, the whole universe is depending on the light of the sun. But the, the sun is the sun is moving in his orbit under the order of Krishna. All the demigods are controlled by Krishna. They, they simply hold Krishna in great awe and reverence. But what is the mercy that Krishna showed to Mother Yashoda that he agreed to be controlled by her? It is great astonishment. Great powerful demigods. The overseers of universal affairs, they simply have to bow their heads down at the lotus feet of Krishna. But Krishna has to be tied up, he is tied up by Mother Yashoda. So this is one very secret quality of Krishna that is only understood by the most intimate and advanced devotees. What is the meaning of Krishna's mercy? What is the actual meaning of Krishna's mercy? Krishna's mercy is not that you get not dhanam, not janam, not sundarim, not moksha, not money, or fame, name, fame, dhanam, not any beautiful woman or any beauty, any wonderful thing, not even moksha. That even is not uh, that even is not very not considered very great. Moksha, raghuta krit one quality of pure devotional service, it makes moksha seem very insignificant. But pure devotional service, that is sudur lava, even moksha is not easy to attain. But in comparison with this pure devotional service, it's very difficult to attain. Because by pure devotional service, Krishna comes under the control of his devotee. In the, comp in the competition between Mother Yashoda and Krishna, Mother Yashoda must win. There is no question, because Krishna has agreed to become the son of Mother Yashoda. So, young boy, he may defy, little boy may defy his mother and cause some disturbance. But ultimately, the mother is controlling the son, not vice versa. Actually, they're both controlling each other. Mother Yashoda is controlled by Krishna's love, and Krishna is controlled by Mother Yashoda's love. So this mercy, 
that Krishna agreed to be tied up by Mother Yashoda. That is not at all to be. These fools, they, they, <laughs> they say that there is no God. They're so far away from God. They have no idea. How can they even begin to understand? Why should they even think to make any commentary on Bhagavata? Those are atheists. They should not put their nose into Bhagavata. Let them put their, an English saying, put their nose to the grindstone. Let them work hard like acid. Let them, let them take birth as acid, dogs and hogs. But don't come to the Bhagavata. It's not meant for you. This Bhagavata is meant for the pure devotees. Those who can appreciate Krishna, those who have no appreciation of Krishna, they cannot, how can they begin to understand? They don't even understand that there is a Supreme Personality of Godhead, let alone to understand His transcendental nature. Even there are many theists, they believe or at least superficially believe in God. There are even many Vaishnavas. They accept Vishnu as supreme. But this mercy that Krishna is offering to Mother Yashoda, that he agreed to be tied up, what is that mercy? You may think, well, what's, what's the great benefit? Every mother is trying, tying up a child. What's, so, what's the great mercy? What are you making such a big fuss about this mercy? Mercy is that by, by showing this, Krishna shows that he is under the control of his devotee. He's given himself his devotee. Krishna, Krishna says that I give myself to his devotee. Uh, Krishna Tare Karesham. That said that when, when one fully surrenders to Krishna, Dikka Kale Bhakta Kare Yata Shamatam, Kale Krishna Tare Kare Yata Sham. That uh, when one fully surrenders to Krishna, which you're supposed to do at the time of initiation, then Krishna is willing to give himself to you. So Krishna is showing, he's not simply talking. You will find among lovers, one will say, I give myself to you, you are everything to me, I, I will give my life for you. But Krishna is practically doing, he's not simply talking, but he gives himself to his devotees. We find also later on in this tenth canto, it's described that Krishna, whatever promise he makes to his devotees, he should fulfill. Other promises he made, dealing with non-devotees, Krishna may tell lies and so many other things. But dealing with his devotees, he should fulfill his promise. So Krishna told Arjuna, Yeyata maam prabhagyante tam sathaiva bhajamyaham amavat manuvat tante manusha parthasagasha Krishna says, I reciprocate accordingly. As much as you give yourself to me, I give myself to you. I reciprocate with you. And actually Prabhupada describes that if one takes if anyone takes one step towards Krishna, Krishna takes ten steps towards him. Krishna gives himself more to us than we give ourselves to him. But in relationship with the gopis, Krishna found himself, he was unable to fulfill his promise. That the gopis gave themselves so much to Krishna, that Krishna was unable, their, their love for Krishna was so unlimited, that Krishna said, I am in debt, I cannot repay you. So you'll be satisfied. Simply your devotion in itself, that is your reward. Just like Prabhupada, he was sometimes asked him, what do you get from chanting Hare Krishna? What do you get from this chanting? Prabhupada said, more chanting. What is the reward for doing bhakti? More bhakti. Generally people, they do some religious activity. They, they go to some holy place, or they observe some vows, some fasting, some austerity. But they expect that from doing this, I will get something. I will get some reward. But what is the reward of doing bhakti? The chance to do more bhakti. What will we get from chanting Hare Krishna? We'll get the opportunity to go on chanting Hare Krishna. 
What will we get from serving Krishna? The opportunity to go on serving Krishna more and more. So this is the mercy that Mother Yashoda got. Great yogis, they may be performing many austerities to try to see Krishna. Fantasti koti satavatsara sangpragam yo vayora tati manasomuni pungavanam sopyatsi yatrata jitsinya vinchincha tatve govindamadi purusham tamaham vajami. Great yogis, they undergo many austerities for many, many lives just with the hope of catching a glimpse of the toe tip of the lotus feet of Govinda. But that they cannot do. Because Krishna is avichincha tattva. He is not understandable by the mind or by the senses. Krishna is beyond any material endeavor. So the yogis, they are simply hoping to see Krishna at some point in time, even briefly. But Mother Yashoda was not only seeing Krishna, she was tying him up. She was not only seeing him briefly, but she was giving her breast to suckle. So many different intimate pastimes she was having with Krishna. This is the reward of bhakti, that Krishna gives himself to the devotee. So, people are asking, have you seen God? The devotee's aim is not simply to see God. People are coming for darshan, simply to see. Actually, darshan means that who is drishta, who is the seer. Not that I am looking at Krishna, but we should be presenting ourselves. Here I am. You please see me. You please see me. And in, the next thing is to engage in your service. Simply to see why you're asking, seeing God. Why you're putting so much emphasis, see God. But what shall we do to serve God? That should be our motive. Bhakti Siddhanta Sahasrara Thakur used to say, don't try to see God. It's a very strange thing to say. That all the, so many devotees from time immemorial, so many yogis, swamis, gurus, they're all performing the endeavors simply for the sake of seeing God. The Bhakti Siddhanta Sahasrara Thakur said, don't try to see God. Everyone is simply trying to see God. Then why, you, uh, why did you become a sannyasi? If you don't want to see God. Not that we don't want to see God, but don't try to see God, but try to act in such a way that He will be pleased to see you. That is better. In other words, please Him by your service. Seva Mukhe Ki Jivada Swayam He will show Himself to you if you are eager to see Him. Otherwise you'll see Him, but you won't be able to understand Him. So, what mercy? That cannot be that cannot be uh, explained, nor can the non-devotees understand it at all. What mercy, what is the nature of Krishna's mercy? What is the nature of the mercy of God? The non-devotees, they can't understand. Because non-devotees, they're simply thinking in terms of I, me and mine. Those who are thinking in terms of I, me and mine, they think of my home, my wife, my family, my children, my bank balance, my country, my, 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 everything mine. So if they think of God's mercy, they will think that my body will be very healthy, my wife will also be healthy, my children will be healthy, I will be rich, my country will win the cricket match, etc. This is how they're thinking, mercy. They cannot imagine, they cannot understand what is the actual mercy of God which is on the transcendental platform of loving exchange. That God will give His mercy by drowning us in the, that Damodar uh, Ashtakam is in. In what? Ananda Kunde, in pools of ecstasy. That is described how the devotees, they are simply seeing the pastimes of Krishna and drowning in pools of ecstasy. So, so Mother Yashoda, she is not simply seeing God. She is not sitting in meditation in a cave. But she is milking the cows, thinking this milk, that is the best milk I have to give to Krishna. Boil the milk, make it into yoga, make it into butter, feed it to Krishna. 
this is full absorption in Krishna consciousness. So, Shukadev Goswami, there are some famous verses. That Namam Varinchi Nabavo Nasri Rapyam the Sanshaya Prasadam Lekhilezo P. Yat Tat Tata Vimukti Dad. Neither Lord Brahma nor Lord Shiva nor even the goddess of fortune, who is always the better half of the Supreme Lord, can obtain from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the deliverer from this material world, such mercy as received by Mother Yashoda. Then, Nayam Sukhapo Bhagavan, Dihinam Kopika Sutaha, Jnaninam Chakra Bhutanam Yata Bhakti Matamiha. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, the son of Mother Yashoda is accessible to devotees engaged in spontaneous loving service, but he is not as easily accessible to mental speculators, to those striving for self-realization by severe austerities and penances, or to those who consider the body the same as the self. So this is the mercy shown to Mother Yashoda, that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has got many names, such as Bhutatma, the super soul of all living beings, Vishvatma, the soul of the universe. He has many such names, but above all these names, he likes the name Yashoda Dandana. He likes to be known as the darling child of Mother Yashoda. That is his great mercy that is being described here by Sugadev Goswami. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Yeah, that I already explained. What does it mean that we should prevent ourselves so that Krishna wants to see us? Krishna likes to see his devotee. So if we, come, if we come before Krishna asking, give me something for my body, my home, my wife, my children, my friend, my country. Krishna, okay, okay, all right. But he's not very satisfied. But Krishna would be very pleased to see his devotee who only wants to serve him. Just like Nrishinghade killed Hiranyakashipu. But even afterwards he was very angry. So all the different demigods, they were afraid to go before Nrishinga Devi. Even Lakshmi was afraid. So Brahma pushed forward, Kahala, you go forward. He will, Nrishinga Devi is very angry, but he will become peaceful when he sees you, because he will be happy to see you. So they all, all the demigods recognize that Nrishinga Devi he will not be so much satisfied to see Brahma, Shiva, Indra, even Lakshmi, but he will be very satisfied to see Prahlad Maharaj because his attitude is of pure devotional service. Even Nishinga Dev offered Prahlad, what do you want? Prahlad Maharaj said, why are you talking to me like that? I don't want any, I'm not a businessman. I wasn't worshipping you so that I could get anything material. <coughs> Please don't try to... I'm already from a demoniac family. Already I have so many, so much inclination towards demoniac material desires. Please don't tempt me in this way. I didn't serve you for any material thing. So because Salad Maharaj had such an attitude, so Nushingha Dev was very pleased to see him. Others, not so much. But he is very pleased to see Kalad Maharaj. So that we have to follow in the footsteps of Kalad Maharaj. His, what is his attitude in serving Krishna? That he never wanted to... Once Prabhupada was giving a lecture and he, dis, he was describing this, how we should, we should want to give to Krishna, not that we should perform devotional service for any material gain. Prabhupada is describing this philosophically and, and Prabhupada said that uh, just like the gopis, they never wanted anything from Krishna. And Prabhupada stopped. 
He became completely stunned in ecstasy. He couldn't say anything wrong. So, there's, there's no ecstasy in this humdrum materialism.